What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. I know it's been a while um, and I know I was supposed to be doing a series on Dungeon Run uh, but I had two episodes recorded and I was getting ready to upload them and something happened and I realized that the sound didn't record and so that like completely kind of like stopped my momentum. I got really discouraged and uh, it took me so long to get back into it. I, I kept trying to, to get the motivation to do Dungeon Run again and I just couldn't muster it. And, um, and then just all kinds of the bullshit going on in the world right now with all the politics and just how really shitty America is right now. <laughs> um, it's like it's really been like a, a kind of a struggle for me to like get into board games at this time. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot and I, I'm going to get back to Dungeon Run, but I needed to move on to something that was going to motivate me. And today when I came home, this was sitting on my doorstep. Finally, Big Trouble in Little China, the game. Um, as some of you might know, Secrets of the Lost Tomb, another game by Everything Epic Games, is my favorite board game of all time. I absolutely love that game. And so this is one of their newer offerings here is just shipped. And um, I kind of even forgot it was coming out. I saw the box on my doorstep and I had no idea what it was. It looked like a board game size box, but you know, with so many Kickstarters out there, you kind of never know what you're going to get. So I opened this up, saw Big Trouble in Little China, and knew I wanted to do a, uh, a take a look at it. However, it's going to be kind of one of my longer rambling um, videos again, kind of like my Dungeon Degenerates video. So if you liked that, you should like this one. If you did not like that because it didn't really talk about the game much, you may not like this one. So we'll see. So in the late 90s and early 2000s, I was a film critic for genrebusters.com and we focused on martial arts cinema. Um, I've been a huge, huge fan of martial arts cinema ever since the early 80s when Black Belt Theater was on TV. I used to watch that every Saturday morning and uh, with all the old Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest movies. and. Um, Big Trouble in Little China, that came out in when I was in 1986 and I was in fifth or sixth grade. And it was uh, just a, an incredible breath of fresh air for me to see an American made movie that captured the spirit and the feeling of these uh, Chinese and Taiwanese movies that I would watch. And, you know, as I grew and matured and started looking into cinema more and getting more into, you know, John Carpenter, the director, um, come to find out that he too was a huge fan of these movies. Now, there are a couple different kinds of martial arts movies. So in like Japan, you have the Chambara film or the Samurai film and then in Hong Kong and Taiwan you have a couple different styles of Kung Fu movies. So in the very early days um, you know the Shaw brothers were one of the biggest they made thousands of movies and when they first started out the kind of movies they were making were kind of considered to be, you know, feminine, feminine in style. They were a soft style of Kung Fu. They were, it was kind of called the Wuxia Pan, if I'm saying that correctly. And that was like, they were movies about the, kind of like these martial arts heroes that were more fantastic in nature. And you often had men, they had long hair, they actually wore a lot of makeup, fighting with swords, wearing long flowing robes and twirling and acrobatics. And we called them in the 90s, we called them flying swordsman movies because that's what they did. The swordsmen would like take to the air and fly. And it was very operatic and, and very ballet-like. 
Well, when Mona Fong started producing movies for the Shaw Brothers and with the rise of their breakout director, uh, Cheng Che, the films took on a harder style, an open hand, a closed fist style, and a more masculine style. And so for the um, pretty much from like the late 60s through the early 80s, you had the more hard kung fu style, um, kung fu uh, open-handed style where they weren't fighting with swords and flying around with powers. They were, you know, it was hard hitting Bruce Lee style martial arts. All right. And then that trend switched back into the more fantasy, the more flying swordsman style in the kind of like the, the mid eight or the, uh, the, the, the early eighties. And one of the big changes, one of the movies that caused that change to come about was uh, this one here, was Zoo Warriors from the Magic Mountain. And that was directed by my favorite director, which is uh, Choi Hawk. Now this movie is absolutely insane. It is so good. Um, and this movie, made in 1983, was a very big influence on John Carpenter and his movie Big Trouble in Little China. I believe that he actually mentions the movie in the commentary on the DVD. And so Choi Hawk kind of reintroduced Hong Kong to the idea of the flying swordsman movie of the softer style the more feminine style and the more uh, fantastic style so i own like about i think about 700 kung fu movies on on dvd and i just went through and i picked out some of the ones that i like and some of the ones that even um, some of these came out before big trouble in little china and some of them came out after but these are all in the tradition that John Carpenter was riffing off of. So if you remember in Big Trouble, um, in the climactic battle scene, all the, uh, the, the combatants, they drink that, that potion and it allows them to fly and they're like jumping through the air and clashing in the air with swords and stuff. And I had never seen Kung Fu like that before at the time. And so when I finally discovered these flying swordsman movies in the, uh, in the early 90s, because I grew up in Fresno, California, which has a large Southeast Asian population. And there are a lot of video stores around that rented these on VHS. And so I was able to see um, a lot of them. So uh, I'm just gonna go through a, a few of these covers that I pulled out today. Um, Zoo Wars from the Magic Mountain, as I said, directed by Choi Hawk, uh, starring Yin Biao, Bridget Lin, and Adam Cheng. Great movie track it down if you haven't seen it if you are these are all of these movies i'm going to show you if you like big trouble in little china and maybe haven't looked into this kind of cinema check these out okay all men are brothers blood of the leopard um this stars a guy named elvis Choi, and he is really great he was actually in some um category three movies is where he got to start which are basically kind of like soft core porn skinamax kind of stuff but um, he, he's awesome, I love him. Uh, this is a really cool movie. Directed by Chan Wu Nagai, Gai? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, I have no, I know nothing about this director, but this is a good movie. And here we have uh, Butterfly and Sword, or Comet Butterfly and Sword, it is, is all, um, sometimes known. And this was one of the first movies I saw with uh, Donnie Yun, and of course, Michelle Yeoh. Joey Wong, huge star, and little Tony Lung. So I mean, this movie is like a who's who of 90s flying swordsman movies. Really cool movie. And then more of a comedy, a great kung fu comedy, um, Flying Dagger. And that has big Tony Lung and Gloria Yip, Maggie Chung, Jackie Chung. Again, a uh, kind of a who's who of all these uh, in the 90s, the early 90s in Hong Kong were just, I mean, it's like five of these Flying Swordsman movies came out every, <laughs> every week. Um, here we have another early example of a spiritual Kung Fu. So this is also kind of like um, Ghost Stories here. Ghost Stories is one of my favorite board games as well. And that's because it really deals with the kind of topics 
that are dealt with in Mr. Vampire here. So if you don't know anything about Chinese vampires, Chinese vampires, they actually hop because they're, um, they're corpses, they're dead people. And the Taoist monks are transporting these corpses back to their, their village to get buried, to have a proper burial, right? And if they don't have the proper burial, if something goes wrong, then these corpses can come to life. And the reason that they hop is because their feet are bound together for burial purposes, okay? And so they hop with their arms outstretched because I believe they're also blind and they track their victims through smell. And so one of the ways you can avoid getting eaten or they, they smell your breath. So one of the ways you can avoid being detected by a Chinese vampire is to hold your breath. And Mr. Vampire is just awesome. I know this was a huge influence on Sam, uh, Sam Raimi. So uh, great, great movie if you like Evil Dead. And now we're getting into um, one of the more wild directors of the genre, um, Wong Jing. So this is an early Jet Li movie called The Kung Fu Cult Master. Uh, stars Sammo Hung as well. This was supposed to be a trilogy, but they only made one film. And this is one of the wildest movies I've ever seen. So much crazy stuff happens in that movie. Um, another Wong Jing movie, Legend of the Liquid Sword. And of course, if you're a hip hop fan, that title should uh, be familiar to you. Um, another Wong Jing movie, Holy Weapons. This movie, swordsmen fly, they, they stand on the back of birdmen and fight in the sky. And one of these girls fights with a giant pair of scissors. Um, yeah, this is <laughs> a really cool movie too. This one's a little more serious. This is one of the first ones I saw. The Dragon Chronicles. And then an all-time favorite, uh, directed by... Uh, Ching Siu Dong, Duel to the Death, great movie, kind of a really, really neat mix of mystical kung fu and um, chambara. And then of course the classic uh, King Hu and Choi Hawk's The Swordsman. And then another one that Choi Hawk produced called The Magic Crane. And of course, Choi Hawk. Can you tell I like Choi Hawk? Uh, a Chinese ghost story. Again, this was like a huge. Like when I first saw ghost stories in the store, I knew I had to get it because it was like completely a riff on a Chinese ghost story. Green Snake, Choi Hawk's classic kind of erotic flying swordsman movie. And then Ronnie Yu's The Bride with White Hair. So yeah, so these are just some films. If you wanted to look for some of these, if maybe you wanted to check out some more stuff like Big Trouble in Little China. And I also have some books here. Um, I'm not gonna go like super into, this isn't gonna be as long as my Dungeon Degenerates uh, art look. <clears throat> but this is a really, really great resource here. The Video Hound's Dragon, a huge, huge book on uh, reviews and information on all kinds of martial arts cinema. This was made in 2003 and I don't think it's been updated since, so it is somewhat out of date. However, um, in around 2008 or so, um, Hong Kong cinema took a massive, massive nosedive. After the reunification of Hong Kong and China, uh, Hong Kong started making more movies for the mainland audiences. They really lost their edge. They started focusing way more on special effects and 3D, unfortunately. And even my favorite directors like Choi Hawk hasn't really made a good movie in over 10 years, really. Um, so even though this was made in 2003, it is not out as out of date as you would think. You're, we're missing 15 years of films, but there's maybe been I don't know, maybe a dozen films, Hong Kong films in the last 15 years worth watching. So even though it's out of date, this is an awesome book. And then let's just go over real quick. I couldn't find my cover for A Touch of Zen, so I grabbed this book here. This was a King Hu's movie, and this was, I think, the only um, Kung Fu movie to win an award at the Cannes Film Festival. Super early film, one of the earlier examples of the Wuxia Pan. 
and it stars a female swordsman. And this is a great, great movie. Uh, it's a Buddhist allegory. There's all kinds of mysticism, incredible cinematography. And, um, you know, the, it's really early. And so the action choreography isn't all that great, but it is a really, really good movie with one of the more inspiring endings I've ever seen. Very much reminiscent of 2001 and how it gets really esoteric. And then uh, David Boardwell is an English gentleman, and he, for some time, maybe still, was considered the pretty much the world expert on Hong Kong cinema. And this is his book, Planet Hong Kong. This is a great book. Uh, he was a professor, and I believe this was the, the textbook that he used to teach. Again, this is an older book. Um, not sure when this was, what the copyright date on this is. Uh, 2000. And yeah, Harvard University Press. So um, very highly recommended if you want to get a more scholarly take on the uh, Hong Kong film. Out of all the books I own, this is my favorite book. The Swordsman and the Zheng Hu. So Zheng Hu is a Chinese term that means the, kind of like the criminal underworld, the martial underworld. Pretty much all martial arts, Chinese martial arts films take place in the Zheng Hu. Okay, that's just like the world of the martial artist. And this is a book all about Choi Hawk. And this was made by the, um, like the Hong Kong Film Society. And, um, it's just such an incredible book because it has these articles written by people that worked with him. And he's a really interesting guy, hugely political. He left uh, the mainland because he thought he was gonna get um, put in jail because his films were very, very critical of the Chinese government and of communism. And so the, the articles in here are in Chinese and in English. And it just has all kinds of information. Really, he also did a cartoon for Chinese ghost story. Um, but it just has all kinds of awesome information and and really neat insight into I think one of the world's most important directors. And finally, a book by another English gentleman, Bay Logan. This is a pretty famous book here, Hong Kong Action Cinema. Not as not as in depth as some but it has a ton of great pictures and a ton of great information. So I just kind of wanted to give a, 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 a quick overview before we dive into the box of Big Trouble, just to show you guys some things to look for if the genre of Big Trouble interests you. And then here we have the Big Trouble in Little China art book, which is pretty cool. It has a lot of stuff about the film storyboards, design, set design, and then it goes into all like the merchandise they're making. And it's funny, it was, I think Big Trouble was kind of a flop in the cinemas here. And it's since has become a cult favorite and is uh, much more popular now than it ever was. All right, so here we have this is the deluxe version. So this has like, I think one or two expansions already inside it. I don't believe this is available through the website anymore, but I don't believe there's anything exclusive. I think everything that's in here will eventually be made available through Everything Epic's store. So let's take a look at the back of the box here. It's a pretty big box. Relive the movie adventure or follow a new path. So, pretty cool box. One to four players, 14 up, 120 minutes. Um, they do have videos showing how to play the game. I haven't watched them. I don't know really anything about this game. I have not been paying too much attention to it. So the, uh, so the deluxe edition bonuses, you get uh, a campaign. I know this is not exclusive. So Legacy of Low Pan Campaign. You get a quest book, six reward cards, a game board overlay, boss board, and eight tokens. And you get um, an expansion to play up to five to six players. 
So I don't know. I don't know. Five to six players, it probably just means it's going to take forever. So I'll probably never play it with that many. So I have taken the shrink wrap off already. But let's take a look here. All right. Okay, so we're going to start off. We have the rule book. Now, I think everything I pick, I have, I'm only familiar with Secrets of the Lost Tomb. And even though their games can be fiddly, I think they write rules pretty well. Um, and they always have a lot of really nice art in the rule book. So I think this art is probably from the Boom uh, comic book. Uh, let's just take a quick look through the rule book here. It's a, it's a nice quality. Pages aren't too thin. Looks like it's laid out pretty well. And it does look like it's pretty lengthy. So once again, it looks like this is probably going to be a pretty fiddly game. Lots of moving parts, lots of rules, lots of exceptions, and a ton of theme. These guys, I think, these guys are just, their games just overflow with theme. Really looking forward to Secrets at the Lost Station. All right, so we'll keep the um, component page out. Okay, so now we have this. This is, I believe, is the um, overlay in the low pan expansion. Something you just put on the board. It's just a little cardboard, so not that great. I might mount that on something a little more substantial. And then you just get a couple, uh, a couple little mini posters. Two of the elementals, low pan, and the lightning guy. I always forget their names. And I did see this earlier. It is um, a thank you and a page of errata. So there's a misprint in the rules on page 31. And so you get um, something that you can refer to. So that is nice that that came with it. So you can just put that in your rule book. Okay, so this is the um, low pan board that comes with his special campaign david Lopan, the sorcerer really that's a really cool art i really like that a lot and some tokens here again i don't really know anything about how the game plays um you do get this six demon bag i don't know what this is for probably for dice maybe Pulling random stuff out. I don't know. Speaking of dice, you get a ton of, of custom dice. It looks like there's three or four different colors. Let's see here. You got a yellow, a red, a white, and a black. Um, yeah, these they feel pretty nice. They're solid. The uh, die cut is nice. Good colors. I think they look pretty cool. I like I like the colors. They're like very kind of stereotypical Chinese colors. Uh, if you take a look at I have this Feng Shui um, compass here. And uh, yeah, that could go right along with it. So good job. Good job on the coloring, guys. I like that a lot. That is just, that is just, a, <laughs> that is just a ton of dice. Um, okay, so here's the thing I was most excited about this game was these large quest books. So again, the reason I like Secrets of the Lost Tomb so much is that it's so thematic. The story is so neat to, to learn about, and it really creates an ebb and flow, a dramatic arc to the games. Um, each quest has like a beginning, middle, and end, and you have this natural arc that flows like a good story. So I really think that this game is going to have that as well. And the main quest book is pretty big. It's almost... Um, like 90 pages and there is a lot of text in here a lot of stuff to read there are different choices you can make so depending on what you do you have different outcomes I love that uh, that's one of my favorite things to do in in board games so yeah that looks really cool really looking forward to diving into that hoping to, get to play I'm trying to get some friends to play it this weekend um, then the Legacy of Lopan. So this is the expansion campaign book. 
little, not quite as long, but 39. And, but this is like a, the Legacy of Lopan is a campaign style quest that is included with the five and six player expansion to the core game. Instead of using quests from the main quest deck, players will resolve quests triggered by advancing along the timeline track. So it has some different gameplay elements. That's pretty cool. And then what do we have here? The Demon Bride. While in Demon Bride form, Margo gains combat plus two yellow dice. Margo also cannot perform task actions or skill actions until she changes back. There's something special for the uh, character Margo there. And a little pamphlet, a little um, advertisement for their other games. All right, so let's take a look at the, let's see, here we got the their pegs for their um, boards. And of course, my knife is in the other rooms. I need to grab my um, X-Acto knife real quick. Be right back. Yeah, right, sorry about that. My pocket knife was in my jeans or my other pants. So these are larger cards. I don't know if that's not maybe considered tarot size. Um, looks like we have some character cards. Oh no, these are the quest cards. So these are 20 main quest cards. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then some uh, rules references. So these are the quest cards. Son of a bitch must pay. And I guess on the back, they just kind of show you different things that you have to look at for the book. So these just kind of keep the game going. And then we have these uh, reference sheets different things you can do with the dice, normal and epic slot, free actions, and a player aid. I always like it when games include player aids. That's really nice, very handy. All right, let's see what else we got. We have here um, a deck of regular size playing cards. Oh, nice. These aren't the... Uh, super tightly sealed blister packs. Nice, easy open plastic. So we have, let's see, uh, six special co-op ability cards. That uh, looks like, um, yeah, co-op ability, co-op ability. Special abilities. Nice art. I'm glad they went for the uh, comic book style art rather than stills from the movie. I like that. That's that's good. Um, got the minions here. Looks like two different difficulty modes. We've got hard and normal. So not a ton of information on these. Now oh, that one has more. Looks like there aren't a lot of minions. So hopefully you don't get too bored of the same enemies over and over again. I'm sure there's uh, ways to, there's probably different things you can encounter in, in the uh, in the quest, quest books. Uh, let's see, what are these here? 22, this must be the side quests. Yeah, these are side quests. So quite a few different side quests, 22 of those. Not exactly sure how those work. It looks like you have a little bit of flavor text and some things you need to do. All right, let's see, what are these here? Uh, companions. There's Egg, Wang, Jack, Gracie, Margo, and Eddie. So I guess these can all be companions maybe if you're playing like less than the full amount of players possibly. And then we have, uh, what are these, showdown quests, it looks like. Good colors. I like how they kept kind of like the neon look of the uh, 
of the game of the movie. I like that. That's really cool. And these are big trouble cards. 18 big trouble cards. Looks like these are kind of like event cards or random encounter cards. And then these are probably this deck here is probably from the um, from the low pan expansion, I would imagine. And so you're gonna get a few more big trouble cards. Oh, write your own special abilities. That's cool. Although, never use those, but you always think, oh, maybe I will in this game. Eh, probably not. <laughs> oh, there's the six demon bag. So yeah, so this was something special that came with the deluxe version, I believe. Um, not sure what these do. More side quests. All right, so that's all the normal size cards. Running a little long here. I'm going to have to go through the rest a little quicker. So we've got, um, let's see, a small pack of cards here. We got hell cards. Twenty-four hell cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. We got reward cards. So it looks like some weapons and armor and stuff. Pretty cool. Hell cards, I'm not sure what these are. They look cool on the back. I like the kind of the demon fire look there, hell fire. Uh, there's some more. I think the low pan expansion also came with some hell cards that you can mix in with the, uh, with the base set. So some more hell cards here. Hell of the cocksure. Give me your best shot, pal. I can take it. Effect. You may not re-roll any dice. If you remember in the book, or in the in the book, in the uh, movie, there's they, they talk about the different Chinese hells. Uh, was there something like a thousand different hells in 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 Buddhism? And they have like the hell of, I don't know, the hell of thievery, the hell of, the hell of English class. <laughs> you may not make eye contact, but the teacher calls on you anyway. No, you try not to make eye contact. Uh, you must read all flavor and story text aloud in a British accent. If you do not try a British accent, then lose two chi. If your key. If you refuse to read text when it comes up, minus one health. Okay, that is hilarious. I had no idea this game had stuff like that. So this game actually has some stuff you have to do in real life. That that is awesome. That is very, that is very cool. All right, I'm a little. I'm even more excited now to play it. It looks like they did a really good job of capturing the tone of the movie. Uh, let's see more rewards: the Demon Bride, Lightning Straws, Hat, Tiger Claws. Um, let's see, and these, it looks like these are all um, upgrade cards. So these are different ways that you can upgrade your character. Some more rewards. Rewards. Dragon of the Black Pool Jacket. So that gives you a different defense. Gain stuff in combat with Wang Fu. Jack's disguise. Yeah, I remember when he was disguised. His tactical uh, machine gun <laughs> when he shoots the roof and knocks himself out. Hopefully that occurs in the game. That would be hilarious. All right, so that's the cards. I maybe wish there was a little few more cards. I kind of feel like it maybe is card light, but that's cool. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so now we're on to the cardboard or the punch boards. So we have our characters here, Egg Shen, Margo, Lightsbringer, Litzenberger, and these will punch out. And these are, you, you place your dice, so it's like kind of a dice placement um, action selection mechanism. Um, let's see, who do we have here? We have Bridget Law, Kim Cattrall. Every guy was in love with her back in the day, right? Uh, one of the greatest actors of all time, Mr. Kurt Russell as Jack Burton, Eddie Lee, Wang Chi, 
it's on the reflexes jack and then let's see here we've got the fate track we've got the bosses the boss cards lightning thunder the elementals five elemental ninja chinese super ninjas maybe you guys recognize that movie david lopan made flesh rain the uh wild creature that was in the back of his truck so i like that there aren't a ton of chicks that's nice it's not like hundreds looks like a good uh, a uh, a respectable amount that should be easier to organize sometimes when i see at the back of the box it's like this game has 200 chits i'm like Ugh, no thank you i would rather have more cards or even less chits i don't know to me chits are like kind of like my least favorite thing about a game just because it's like it's so it just you have to organize them you know and then finally we have i'll move these over we have the plastic and like folklore you get a nice sheet here that shows you where everything goes back so that is cool you don't have to hunt and peck oh no forgot one thing the board I believe this is a pretty big board so let me see if i can move everything around real quick and get that set up And it's double-sided, so depending on what part of the game you're on, you start in Chinatown. Excuse the glare from my overhead light. All right, there we go. Really nice looking board. I like that a lot. National Bank, Gracie's Pad, Egg Fu Young's Tours, there's his bus. Uh, the White Tiger, the Brothel, the Trading Company. You have the underground here in the sewers where they find the eyeball monster. Yeah, really, really nicely made board. I like that a lot. That looks The iconography and the art on this is a huge step up from Secrets of the Lost Tomb which was quite frankly an, an ugly game. Uh, now this is a weird, the other side is a weird board in that it's in portrait mode. So you have level one, level two, this is where they were fighting, and level three, and there's the famous hallway where he throws the uh, dagger back at David Lopin. So really nice board. They did a just an absolutely fantastic job on this thing. It looks it looks great. It feels like it's sturdy. Um, yeah, I, I really really cannot wait to play this. I'm gonna have to watch some videos tonight now that I have it in my hands. And finally, let's just take a quick look. So here's the heroes. Uh, let's see, where's Jack? Here's Jack. And uh, wow, they're really in there. Hold on a second. Uh, nothing hidden, no secret surprises underneath the box. Um, minis feel okay. They're 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 sturdy. Um, I've definitely seen much higher quality sculpts. These are merely I would call these merely serviceable, but that's fine. There's egg. And let's see here. That must be uh, Kim Cattrall there. And let's see, here's Lopan. He looks pretty cool. I like him. Lightning. Everybody's everybody loved lightning when I was a kid. It's funny, like these elemental guys, they're so cool, but they're hardly in the movie. But they have such a big presence that they, they kind of take over your your memory of the movie, even though they really don't do much in the film. They die really easily. They're uh, Even though they're powerful, they're really easy to take out. But they had such a cool look and sound and just, 
You know, they're kind of like Boba Fett. You know, Boba Fett was only in like Star Wars movies for what, like five minutes. And growing up, everybody loved Boba Fett. And it's like, well, I mean, he was in Empire for all but 30 seconds. Um, so, yep, there's the rest. You got the minions. You got the guys with the uh, the guns, the bald dudes, the beholders, the machete guys, the uh, the statues. And then here, oh wow, he's really in there. Let me try to get the the beast out. Okay, he's all right. So yeah, not the best minis. We're not talking um, like Dark Light or Journey quality minis here but they're okay and they're solid they feel they, they have a nice feel to them i do worry though so this guy's pretty fragile on his base and popping him back in um just word of warning just kind of be careful with some of these popping them back in because this uh this plastic is it's a really tight fit all right well that was Big Trouble in Little China. And a look at the tradition of martial arts cinema that it is uh, a part of, an homage to. So I hope you guys liked this and I hope maybe I kind of uh, gave you guys some suggestions for some movies to check out if you haven't checked out any of them. If you want more suggestions, just hit me up in the comments and I am happy to always suggest awesome martial arts movies because I absolutely love them. So, all right, you guys, we'll have a good one, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.